Hello, I'm Chris Taylor. And I'm Dora Pethbridge. We work in the International Collections team at the National Library of Scotland. Today we're going to continue our American political history project and look at two founding fathers, Benjamin Rush and John Witherspoon, who both signed the Declaration of Independence. To begin our story, we've come to the entrance arcade of the old medical school at the University of Edinburgh and to this commemorative plaque which memorialises the achievements of Americans who studied here during the mid-18th century and which highlights the connection between America and Scotland during the Enlightenment era. This plaque specifically memorialises the achievements of two founding fathers who attended the university, Benjamin Rush and John Witherspoon. Benjamin Rush was an American born in Philadelphia. He attended Princeton University and on graduating decided on medicine as his profession. He was advised to come to Edinburgh, which was then the home of the most renowned medical school in the world. Like many young Americans, Rush was attracted by Edinburgh's reputation. It was known as a great seat of learning, of pioneering scholarship and philosophy. Another founding father, Dr. Benjamin Franklin, spent time in Scotland, interacted with the great minds of the day and became friends with philosophers such as David Hume and Adam Smith. The movement of Americans to Scotland was more than matched by the movement of Scots to America, for during this period emigration increased and America was often thought of as a land of opportunity. We're going to look at the opportunities that America presented to Scotsman John Witherspoon. And as our story unfolds, we'll see how Benjamin Rush, at the age of 21, was instrumental in Witherspoon's decision to leave Scotland for America. As this plaque shows, and as we'll hear, at this time, a wonderful network of friendships and political ties was built up between America and Scotland. And this network was to become highly influential in the American Revolution. John Witherspoon was born in 1723 at Gifford near Haddington in Scotland. He attended Edinburgh University where he studied theology and he then followed his father James in becoming a Church of Scotland minister. In 1757 Witherspoon moved with his wife Elizabeth and his family to Paisley. He was now publishing religious essays and was becoming increasingly well known. He was therefore offered posts in Rotterdam, Dundee and Dublin. He rejected them all. In 1766, Witherspoon was offered the presidency of the Presbyterian College of New Jersey at Princeton. Witherspoon himself was tempted by the post, but his wife Elizabeth didn't want to go. Two future signers of the Declaration of Independence, Richard Stockton and Benjamin Rush, both attempted to persuade Witherspoon to accept. Ultimately, Rush went to Paisley and was successful in persuading the Witherspoons to go. On his arrival at Princeton, Witherspoon set about transforming the college. Among his students, there were many future American revolutionaries, one of whom, James Madison, would become the fourth president of the United States. In 1775, the American War of Independence broke out. Witherspoon had developed revolutionary ideas and was very much against British rule. A propaganda war had broken out between the two sides. One of the most important contributions was this book, Thomas Paine's Common Sense. In May 1776, Witherspoon contributed this work, The Dominion of Providence Over the Passion of Men, a sermon preached at Princeton. The pamphlet was dedicated to the Honourable John Hancock, President of the Congress of the United States of America. It was extremely important because it helped to reinforce the American revolutionaries' view that God was on their side. On page 44, Witherspoon writes, I mention these things, my brethren, not only as grounds of confidence in God, who can easily overthrow the wisdom of the wise, but as decisive proofs of the impossibility of these great and growing states being safe and happy when every part of their internal polity is dependent on Great Britain. It ends, God grant that in America true religion and civil liberty may be inseparable, and that the unjust attempts to destroy the one may in the issue tend to the support and establishment of both. In July 1776, Continental Congress passed the Declaration of Independence.
Rush and Witherspoon were just two among many signers of the Declaration of Independence to have connections with Scotland, for it is estimated that of the 56 men who signed, over a third were of Scottish descent. Yet Witherspoon and Rush were unique in other respects. Witherspoon was the only active clergyman to sign, and Rush was the only signer to hold a medical degree. Despite Continental Congress declaring America independent, the fighting continued, as did the propaganda war. And in 1778, Witherspoon published an appendix to his sermon preached at Princeton. It was an address to the natives of Scotland residing in America. And although Witherspoon had said that he felt like an American on landing, he still felt a strong tie to his Scottish roots. He addresses his fellow countrymen like this. There are many natives of Scotland in this country whose opposition to the unjust claims of Great Britain has been as early and uniform, founded upon as rational and liberal principles, and therefore likely to be as lasting as any set of men, whatever. Witherspoon continues with the discussion of the importance of public spirit if America is to be victorious. He writes, I think that every candid and liberal mind ought to rejoice in the measures lately taken through the States of America, and particularly the late Declaration of Independency, as it will not only give union and force to the measures of defence while they are necessary, but lay a foundation for the birth of millions and the future improvement of a great part of the globe. The War of Independence officially ended with the Paris Peace Treaty in 1783. The National Library holds many documents describing the changes brought about by independence. This letter, written by Benjamin Rush, is one such document. He's writing to his friend, the Earl of Buchan, a Scot and a staunch supporter of the American cause. It is a long and affectionate letter, and it seems to me as if the Earl of Buchan has asked Rush what's America like now that it's independent from Great Britain. Rush was an outspoken opponent of slavery and an advocate for the education of women. So it seems that he was aware that liberty and inalienable rights did not extend to everyone in America. However, in 1801 from Philadelphia, he writes to his friend and describes America like this. Our late rapid population, increasing agriculture and manufacture, and our unlimited and productive commerce all indicate the immense influence of liberty and equal government upon human happiness. Whilst being a powerful statement about the success of America after it became independent, this letter also represents Russia's lasting friendships with the Scots he met while studying here in Edinburgh. As we've seen today, the exchange of ideas between Scotland and America was an essential part of America gaining its independence from Great Britain. These ideas are represented by the collections here at the National Library of Scotland. We hope this video will encourage you to find out more about this fascinating subject.